Good morning. It is good to be here with you this morning, and I'm honored uh, to give you a message. And I'm going to ask for your help. At the, towards the end of the service, I'm going to ask those who are here in the sanctuary to pair off. It's only three-minute ritual, a relational ritual, just to reflect on some questions that I'll be sharing in a moment. For those of you who are joining us online, I invite you to talk. If there's someone with you, you can pair off together. And if not, please feel free to journal. And if you need a moment to grab something to write with or pull up a different uh, tablet or computer, so you can journal your response to the questions and hopefully have that conversation with someone after worship. Too often, we show up to church with just our intellectual minds engaged, more or less, and we ignore our bodies and spirits. So today I invite you to practice listening to your body and spirit to try to understand what spirit-led wisdom they might offer you. So as you hear these reflection questions, as you listen to the message, as you talk and reflect with one another in pairs, I invite you to pay attention to your body and take note of any reactions that you might feel as indicators for further exploration and reflection. Listening to your body and spirit might include noticing changes in your breathing, changes in your heartbeat, or maybe it's a feeling of tension or tightness, or perhaps a feeling of release and peace. Or maybe it's a kind of heat that starts to build that's not related to the weather. Here are the reflection questions, and I offer them now so that they have a little time to marinate, and that you might look through these, the lens of these questions as you listen to the message. And we'll come back to these questions at the end of the sermon. What are you holding on to about the church as it has been that is preventing the church that is to come? Is what you're holding on to rooted in collective love and justice of the gospel? Or is it rooted in individualism or injustice and bias? What do you imagine is possible if you let go and move on into new life as a faith community? What are we called to do right now as the church? I'm grateful for Terry's children's message today because she focused on the parts of the scripture that I'm not going to focus on in detail. There's a lot to unpack in the scripture today. That was a fun lectionary um, alignment. And we just don't have the time to unpack everything, so I'd like us to focus on verses 9 through 10 to get at what is the bigger message that we are supposed to take away. Those two verses read, Do not lie to one another. Seeing that you have stripped off the old self with the, its practices and have clothed yourselves with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. There are three lessons in this passage that point us to a larger meaning. One, the passage is written in the plural about a faith community. It's about our relationships to one another and to God as a community of faith and how and who we are in Christ. Two, being honest with one another as the church is not about hiding behind small changes and pretending that we've transformed. Being honest with one another as a faith community is the removal of our former selves, our former way of being in the world, so that we can take on a whole new way of being church together. And three, the church is being renewed, is being, is an ongoing prophetic promise that as a community of faith, our new self is always renewed in the wisdom of our Creator. You see, the big picture is that a new life in Christ is a process of ongoing renewal, or ongoing death and rebirth, of our faith communities under the wisdom of the Holy Spirit who guides us in our relationship to our Creator. Collective transformation requires personal and relational transformation. This is different from hyper-individualism, 
and as the focus of, on relationships and individuals that make up the whole of the collective versus just on the individual's transformation. So let's take a personal lens and then come back to the collective lens to get a better sense of how personal and relational transformation integrate. As I share this personal story, I hope that you can imagine and identify with me the connective tissue that draws us together as we live amongst personal, spiritual, and societal dying, death, and grief. The gift of renewal is that it comes to calm the overwhelm that lulls us into apathy amidst our sense of powerlessness and facing the threat of being consumed by systems of evil that feel larger, more powerful, and immovable. I hope that you might hear my personal story as a parable or a way to understand and illustrate a larger and systemic issue facing the church today. I also hope that my story might resonate with those of you who are struggling with grief and trying to figure out how to get through it like I am. A year ago on July 2nd, I gave birth to my son. In a couple of days after I turned to work from parental leave, my mom died suddenly and unexpectedly. It has been deep heart work for me to continuously figure out how to hold in loving tension the grief over my mom's death and the joy of my son's new life. My whole world has been transformed and I am becoming a whole new self. I am a mother without my mom. I've noticed that I've been holding back on making big decisions. As I began to unpack this feeling of stuckness and fear of moving forward with my spiritual director, I came to understand that I was desperately trying to hold on to my past self, my life as it was when my mom was alive. I was and am still afraid of making big changes that my mom won't experience with me, and that would alter the narrative of my life in ways that don't include her. It is heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking to imagine living the next half of my life without her. You see, if things just didn't change in any big ways, then maybe our life together as mother and daughter wouldn't keep moving so far back in the horizon of my ongoing life. As I journaled about this fear, I noticed the date at the top of the page, July 18th, nine months since my mom's death on October 18th. A whole season of gestating grief, awaiting the arrival of a new life without her. Amidst the grief, a point came in which I had to choose new life. Choose to move forward instead of just surviving, enduring, and holding on to my old self. This choice doesn't mean that my mom is forgotten. It means that I am learning to carry her with me in a new form and in a new way. I choose to carry her with me by embodying her spirit and all that she was to me and sharing that spirit with others just as she did. I sense her within me when I'm being my most loving and my love for my child and when I'm fully present to others. Who she was to me is unconditional love and when I live in love I feel most close to her essence or that which is essential about her as a beloved child of God. I'm choosing renewal and it is an ongoing choice that I will have to keep making to move forward in creating this new life. I share this parable to help us recognize a larger story. And because the experience of personal transformation can help us see our role in and the possibility of collective renewal. While we are capable of intellectual awareness about the need for large-scale transformation, 
we often fail to understand or see our role in that transformation, myself included. We tend to focus on the importance and roles of other people with more credentialed and traditional power. And we relinquish our power to others. And in doing so, we trick ourselves into believing that renewal happens with little effort for us, from us as individuals, from our relationships, or from our faith communities. The truth is, that collective transformation depends entirely on personal and relational transformation. And that is what our scripture is pointing us towards today. The gospel of Christ is about individual, relational, spiritual, and social transformation. And that includes, but is not limited, to all of our churches. Our scripture lesson might seem like there's some kind of light switch for transformation that turns on and off, just like that. But I want to suggest to you that transformation is a matter of ongoing renewal, a process of many little deaths and births. As we travel along the path of following the Holy Spirit and continuing to choose new life in Christ together. But first, we have to make the choice to let go and have faith that new life is not just possible, but that it is within our reach. So many of us are just holding on and enduring, holding on to and enduring church life as we've known it, the death of loved ones, a society that is deeply flawed and broken, in a democracy that is truly only serving a privileged few. There comes a point when we have to make a choice to stop just surviving and enduring and holding on to what was and what is in order to move forward in faith to what is yet to be created. Now it's your turn to share your truths about holding on and choosing renewal. For those who are joining us online, I invite you to talk with someone near you or to journal so that you can have a conversation later with someone. And for those in the sanctuary, I invite you now to find someone, one other person to talk with, hopefully someone you don't know super well, which should be easy, having eight congregations here. And I'm going to wait, and I will give you the questions and a little more instructions after you find your partner. This is a brief ritual. It's meant to start a conversation, not to end it. And you'll have three minutes to share and to listen. So if you'll get together in pairs. As you gather in pairs, I'd like you to share with one another. I invite you, I know this is weird for church to talk to each other during the sermon. <laughs> I invite you to be tender, to be vulnerable, and to feel deep in your heart. And as you listen to one another, don't try and fix it. Don't try and smooth it over. Just be present to one another and look for the connection of the energy of the Holy Spirit that resides between you. You have three minutes to share with one another. So make sure both of you get to talk in those three minutes. Here are the reflection questions again. You don't need to answer them all. It's not a test, not an essay. Just respond to what speaks to you most today. What are you holding on to about the church as it is, has been? that is preventing the church that is to come? Is what you're holding on to rooted in collective love and justice of the gospel? Or is it rooted in individualism or injustice and bias? 
What do you imagine is possible if you let go and move on in new life as a faith community? What are we called to do right now as the church? Please be in spirit together. If you haven't heard from the other person, now's the time to switch. You have about 15 seconds left. In the sanctuary, if you've moved around and want to go back to your um, spot, please do so. Or you can hang out with your new friend. And I'm sorry that we can't get the feedback for those online. I'm interested, though, if you want to reach out. So for those in the sanctuary, I'd just like to see if there's a couple of people. We're not here for a retreat. So just a couple of folks. Does anyone want to share what came up? Um, 
And if you're, if you're wanting to share something that came between you, make sure you just have permission of your partner. But did you feel movement of the Holy Spirit? Did you sense connection? Did you learn something new or hear something out loud that's only been inside? Is there anyone that would like to share? You don't have to come up. I can, I'll repeat it for the viewing audience. Yeah. So let me see if I have that. Uh, Someone just got back from a trip to El Salvador through the church, and you saw other different churches coming together. Oh, you met, so, okay, as UCC Protestants met at a Catholic church, and that experience of coming together with others in the Christian faith was powerful, and that's an idea for question number three of what you might imagine. Yeah, you have a giant Catholic seminary across the street. Uh huh. <laughs> yep. Good. Thank you. Anyone else? Any responses to these questions that came up in your conversations? Not for public consumption yet? So let me see if I'm summarizing this well. One of the things it sounds like you want to keep in the future of the church is our inclusion, because you've had experiences where you've gone to church spiritual spaces where you were excluded. Hmm. So I'm going to wrap that up, and then we'll see if there's others. But being thoughtful and careful about how you live in this world, and you talked about titled power, right? Not always just blaming the title. We all bear responsibility. Others? Yeah, Amy. So Amy shared that with all of these churches coming together today, some of us will need to learn how to let go of our church buildings despite the deep meaning they may have for us, how they have provided for us, but that there are, is a different life perhaps ahead of us. Thank you. I hope this is a conversation starter, and if you want to eat popsicles and talk more about the future of the church, Feel free to nerd out after worship. You see, letting go and moving on and moving forward includes identifying what is loving and just about who we've been and finding new ways to embody that spirit of God that has always been here. And also letting go and moving forward includes extricating ourselves from what is harmful and unjust and then building entirely new lives together including our institutions and our systems. This is not the first time that the church or society has been in this kind of situation, nor is it the last time. Our faith and our histories show us that renewal is possible and always ongoing. 
The lectionary or prescribed scripture for today leaves off verses 12 to 17 of the section titled The New Life in Christ that you heard the beginning of. And the lectionary doesn't bring it back. It's not next Sunday. I find that kind of curious because verses 12 through 17 explain what the new life in Christ looks like for the church. So in closing, let me offer these verses and vision for what we are to create in renewal of our faith communities. Therefore, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another. And if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Christ has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called into one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of Jesus giving thanks to God. Amen.